Hey everybody, in today's video I am going to go over the lenses that I use to shoot all my videos. I've only ever had three lenses and there's been some cases where I'll hire a videographer and they'll bring their own, but ever since I've been shooting HD, uh, pretty much everything that's been going on to any of my channels has been through these lenses. Here's the first video that I shot in HD. Hey guys, I'm posting this video to say thanks for everyone who competed in the CD contest. So a few more updates. I got a bunch of new equipment, which is why this video is in HD. And, uh... Whew! This is back when HD was still kind of new to the internet. The description was in the sidebar. When monetization was this weird new thing that people thought might destroy the site. Fred was the most subscribed channel with a million subs. Remember that? And the quality for videos on this channel was pretty similar. So I bought these lenses quite a while ago. So it's not like this is a video about what are the best lenses to use. In fact, these are the cheapest possible ones I could find at the time um, that did what I wanted them to. So it's more about the equipment that I stumbled upon and how it's sculpted what I make. Which I'm assuming if you're watching the second channel, you're interested in the music videos I make. And if you came here some other way, well, welcome to the weird side of YouTube. Well, let's get into it. Right now, I have my camera about a foot and a half away from me. I have the kit lens on it. I'm gonna keep the camera in the same place, but change the lens to the 50 millimeter. Oh wow, things just got real intimate in here. Let's let's back it up, let's go to the fisheye lens. This one's really, really wide. And it's hard to appreciate just how wide this lens is, so here's me from another angle, and how close I am to the camera, and it still looks like I'm really far away. Here's me right now, completely on the side of the camera, yet I am still totally in frame. So it's crazy, crazy, super silly wide. Let's uh, move this into where I usually have it. There we go. So with this massive wideness comes massive, crazy distortion, uh, which is also how I like my guitar signal. Come on. Audience I put in later, jeez. If you're familiar with skating, skaters use fish eyes a lot so that you can capture everything that's going on. That's how I was recommended to it. This particular lens is the cheapest on the market that's a semi-decent quality. At least at the time, I don't really know what they go for now. And with the cheapness of this lens, it also causes some problems. Mainly, everything through this lens is a little bit blurry. Nothing is ever fully in focus, um, so I do need to compensate for this a lot in editing with the tool called sharpening. There's a whole lot of post-processing that the footage goes through before it ends up on YouTube. Maybe I'll do a video all about that soon because it's not really a part of the process people really think about. But for now, I'll just turn everything off. So here's the footage totally raw from the camera with nothing on it, and you can tell things are pretty blurry. To compensate for this blurriness, I use the sharpening tool, and right now I'll turn on just that, and you can see that it tries to artificially make the footage sharper, tries to create lines, and I use it kind of subtly. You can ramp it up to the extreme. Here's what that looks like. Here's back to being a bit more subtle, but you can see the more you ramp it up, the more like, cartoonish and weird the footage gets. But considering there's so much distortion with this lens anyway, and things already look a little bit cartoony, I think it's not that big of a deal and maybe actually adds to the cartoony and fun <laughs> type of shot that this lens gets. This really weird and uh, kind of extreme viewpoint I use whenever I want things to be kind of extreme or wacky looking, which is uh, for me pretty often. And it took me quite a while to learn how to frame things with this lens because if you're you know off just a few inches, you can end up, you know, having things look weird and not in a good way. So it sometimes helps to shoot with this lens in really confined places, like up against a corner or in my old office, which was <coughs> really small. So anyway, that's the fisheye lens. Let's change it now to the kit lens. All right, things have gotten real intimate again. I'm gonna move this. All right, cool. And this is the kit lens. And it's called the kit lens because it just comes with the kit. It comes with the camera. You can zoom with this one, which is really nice. You know, you got a few options there. This lens works in a whole lot of different situations. You can use it for a whole lot of different things. It does a whole lot of things really well, but also doesn't really do anything great. This is the lens I use when I want shots to look normal. You know, there's no crazy distortion. There's not any crazy shallow depth of field. It, if you're unfamiliar with depth of field, it's probably more useful for me to try and show it to you. So if I put the 50 millimeter in front of the lens, 
you can see that there's a big difference between that being in focus, me being a bit blurry, and then the background being even blurrier. And the more shallow a depth of field, the more of a difference in blurriness um, an object is gonna have depending on how close or far away it is from the lens. And you can adjust this within the lens, and here's as blurry, as shallow a depth of field this lens gets, um, which is quite a good amount of blurriness, and here's, Here's it without um, a shallow depth of field where you can see the background is a lot less blurry than what's in focus. When I'm using the kit lens, I usually keep the depth of field at a normal looking amount. But if you really wanna go crazy with that, you go to the 50 millimeter, which we will switch to now. Now things get really extreme and really shallow. It's kind of gross actually, this close up, whether or not I want my nose or my mustache to be in focus, so just move a little bit. It really shows how shallow this can get if I'm doing a shot where I'm looking down the neck of a guitar. I mean, you can see if you're not just right at that point, things get real blurry real, real quick. I was recently filming with Rob Chapman and he thought it was really funny that I used compressed air to get rid of the dust on my guitars. But this lens is why. You now I gotta have your pickups looking nice. So this lens is for the extreme close-ups. I'm gonna move this camera back now and uh, make the depth of field less extreme. All right, that works. So the 50 millimeter is the lens I use whenever I want a sensual shot, I guess it kind of describes what this lens looks like. And it's really great whenever I really need to focus the audience's attention on something. And I don't just use it for really up close shots, I'll also use it for semi wide shots. I'll move the camera back a few feet and it just has a really wonderful look. Nearly all of my videos have a shot like that. In fact, nearly all of my videos use all three of these lenses at some point. Let's go back to the fisheye. That was awful. So my videos are usually a combination of these three looks and it's really become a big part of the style and uh, feel of the videos. And what I like about these lenses is that I have a mid ground and then I have a super extreme wide angle and then super extreme close up with crazy depth of field. And I think it adds to a uh, fun vibe, I guess, for lack of a better word. I think these constantly changing perspectives just adds another dimension. And I think for the stuff that I make, um, it definitely works in well. Um, there's always dust on this lens though. I always mean to clean it off. There, there I got it. So yeah, those are the lenses that I use. Um, consider subscribing to the second channel if you would like. Uh, I like doing behind the scenes stuff like this. I think the second channel is a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Getting the thumbnail.